the neoclassical dependence model. So it is based on uh, Marxist thinking that uh, there's a persistent exploitation, there is a persistent underdevelopment of the developing countries. I mean, according to this model, uh, niche, I mean, rich nations, they exploit poor nations. So the development experience is based on the historical evolution of uh, these developing countries, right? So rich nations, they exploit poor nations. And there is a persistent underdevelopment in developing countries. And this is what we want to see in this. Moment. So there are two kinds of countries. One is core country, another is periphery countries. Core countries are at the center. Periphery countries are on the boundaries. Core countries are developed countries, while periphery countries, they are developing countries. And these developing countries, they have the natural characteristics of underdevelopment. For example, low income, they have low standard of living, they have poor health, um, all of these are there. And the relationship between the core and periphery countries, it is given by uh, unequal relationships between the core and periphery countries, unequal relationships, unequal relationships. So what is what is seen is uh, that uh, core countries they are stronger, and periphery countries they are weaker. So. Right now, we are talking in terms of uh, uh, economics. They are economically stronger countries. They are economically weaker. And there is something which is called comparable groups. These are the groups. These are the social elites. These are the elites or political elites also, which are there in the periphery countries. And they are thriving on the exploitation which is done by core countries on the periphery. So these are like middlemen or these are uh, uh, agents of core countries maybe in the periphery countries. You can say that. And these groups, they thrive on these unequal relationships and they stay in periphery countries. The neoclassical perspective is this, that these developed nations and these foreign institutions like IMF, like World Bank, they thrive on this power dynamics between the core countries and the periphery countries. They benefit from this system of unequal relationships between the developed and developing countries. They, they do not do what neoclassical perspective is saying is that they do not do real reform effort to reform these developing countries. So these developed countries and foreign institutions are thriving on this power dynamics between the developed and developing countries. They do not want to change this dynamics. They are benefiting from this. They are maintaining that system. And they are also benefiting from this particular system. There are other models of development which make internal factors, factors which are present in the country, to be responsible for underdevelopment. For example, um, in certain countries, there might be less education. So that is going to result in underdevelopment. There can be uh, factors like uh, less infrastructure or less savings in the economy. But this particular model, this dependence model, is attributing external factors responsible for underdevelopment in developing countries. They say this, <clears throat> that international exploitation of the developing countries by developed countries and the division of labor which is resulting from that that is resulting in the underdevelopment of these countries because this is unequally favoring the developed countries it is not favoring developing countries and because the 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 relationship is unequal and exploitative so the entire potential of the developing countries, it doesn't come out. And they're not able to develop the way they should if these factors were not there. Oxentos is a very prominent figure in the dependent school and external dependent school. And he says this, that underdevelopment is not just a phase. It is not just going to go away over the time. 
it is a condition which is imposed. Who is imposing these conditions? Developed countries are imposing these conditions. These international agencies are imposing these conditions. On whom this condition is being imposed? On developing countries is being imposed. So that one set of countries, core countries, can develop very fast. And the other periphery countries, they should remain stagnant. They should not grow. In case if this unequal relationship is going to remain, then the developed countries can thrive. Few examples from India, which also tells that this uh, this reasoning of thought it also holds in India, and for for that matter, any other developing countries. For example, agriculture, genetically modified seeds. Now, what happens is these is that that these multinational corporations they push for using these genetically modified seeds. Local distributors, local elites. They also put this in the mind of farmers that if you use these genetically modified seeds, you would require, I mean, you will be able to produce more and hence your profit is going to be. But these seeds are expensive. Now, who is going to benefit from here? Local elites are going to benefit because they are also going to get their commissions. Others, these multinational corporations from the developed nations, they are going to benefit. Who is not benefiting from here? Farmers are not getting benefited from here. Because in order to use these genetically modified seeds, they also have to buy a certain kind of chemical inputs, uh, which are also sold by these multinational corporations. So do you understand this? Agricultural sector in India is being dependent upon multinational corporations of the developed countries. So there is an unequal relationship. And who is thriving on these unequal relationships? These uh, local elites. They are getting their profit. And who is not benefited? Farmers. In India, you also see that there is a lot of foreign direct investment which is also coming by opening of uh, these e-commerce giants. In India, for example, Amazon. Now, Amazon is selling every kind of product in the market. Uh, often those products which are being sold by the retailers, those that comes with some benefits to the retailers as well. But what is seen is that these local retailers, they cannot ever compete with the big giants like Amazon because Amazon has a power to reduce the price a lot. And this also mimics, in a way, that external dependence theory, that the population here will be dependent upon the goods which are provided by MNC such as Amazon, and local retailers will be, will be wiped out. Who is going to benefit? Those distributors, those local elites who are promoting such kind of investments. Another example could be pharmaceutical industry. So India is developing huge generic drug market. So that these drugs could be provided at very affordable price. But again, India has to fight with global giants in pharmaceutical industry because they accuse India of violating TRIPS agreement, violating the intellectual property rights. Uh, so it means that India is also becoming dependent on the global capital because these MNCs from from uh, from external markets, they do not want India to develop such low-cost drugs, right? So these are a few examples where you can show that, yes, there is the dependence of developing countries on the developed countries. Developed countries, they are moving fast, they are growing at the cost of developing countries remaining more or less stagnant.